All right, this right here is the Eastern Roman Empire, also called the Byzantine Empire or basically the continuation of the Roman Empire. If considered as such, the Roman Empire itself lasted for over 2000 years. If not, the Byzantine Empire alone stood for over a millennium. Nonetheless, before we start, I have to clarify some points. Point number one, the title is sort of wrong because I'm not going to be talking about the entire empire because that would require like a hundred different videos. So I'm only going to be talking about the notable rulers according to Wikipedia. Point number two, I'm going to talk about this empire starting 395 after the final split of Rome. So no Constantine nonsense, just saying. Point number three, I will use the terms Roman, Eastern Roman and Byzantine interchangeably which you might ask what the difference is between them. Well, the names Roman or Eastern Roman are quite obvious because, you know, they were Romans and specifically Eastern Romans because they were Western Romans as well. But what about Byzantines? Well, the name is derived from the name Byzantium, a city which was rebuilt as Constantinople by Constantine the Great. This name was given to the Empire during the Renaissance differentiated from the Latin Roman Empire that came before it. Alright, now let's start our journey through a thousand years of growth and downfall of this major empire. The first ruler I will talk about is Arcadius, the first ruler, son of Theodosius the Great and brother of Honorius, the first ruler of Western Rome. A weak ruler, he was controlled by powerful men as well as his wife Eudoxia. His first problem came in the form of a Visigothic rebellion the same year he took the crown. They raided their way through Macedonia and Thrace on their way to Constantinople. Flavius Stilicho, the man controlling Honorius, declared that Theodosius had named him as guardians of both of his sons and took off towards the east to deal with Alaric, the Visigothic king. Arcadius and his controller, Rufinus, were worried about Stilicho and Arcadius told him to stand down, which he did. Later, Rufinus was assassinated on the orders of Stilicho and Eudoxia and Eutropius took his position as guardian and advisor of Arcadius. The government ignored the growing Alaric problem in Greece and thus Arcadius was forced to appoint him Magister Militum of Illyrica. Eutropius won a victory in Roman Armenia and got himself appointed consul, which people did not like and the Ostrogoths in Asia Minor revolted. The second force sent to quell them was under Gainus, who allied with the Ostrogoths and in the end, after pressure from his wife, Eutropius was dismissed and exiled. Gainus wasn't much liked by the Romans either and revolts broke out which saw over 7,000 Ostrogoths killed. He subsequently rebelled in Thrace but was defeated and withdrew to the Danube where he was killed by the Huns and the rivalry began between Eudoxia and John Chrysostom, the Archbishop of Constantinople. This struggle ended in John's exile and Eudoxia died a year later. After this, Arcadius wished to heal relations with Stilicho. But Stilicho was having none of it and asked Alaric to seize Illyrica and give it to the Western Empire. His plan failed and shortly after Arcadius died in 408 and was succeeded by his son Theodosius II. Now on to the second emperor. Before we start though, let's explain the scenario. Britannia has been lost, Gaul to the Franks, Hispania under the Visigoths, North Africa under the Vandals and Italy and thus Rome itself under the Ostrogoths. Huns, Bulgars and Assassins ravaging the border of Eastern Rome and during these difficult times, Rome got a present, an emperor and a great one. His name, Justinian the Great. Justinian had taken the throne after his uncle Justin died. He attacked the many problems the empire faced. First, tax collection. Corruption was rampant across the empire and obviously the rich avoided taxes, which meant the burden fell on the poor who couldn't pay the taxes. Thus, the empire was having financial problems, and to fix this, he brought in John the Cappadocian, who crushed corruption within the rich by torturing them until they paid their taxes. It worked, and Justinian now had a good source of revenue to fuel his campaigns. Secondly, the law, which had become so confusing that no one knew how to proceed with trials, and for this, he brought in Tribonian, who reformed the law code and used Justinian to have these laws superseded above all else. These formed the Corpus Juris Civilis, the basis of today's civil law. Having covered the failings of his empire, he looked beyond its borders. First, he had to take care of the Sasanians. Here, his commander Belisarius halted the Persian advance at the Battle of Dara with only half as many men. This ended the war with the Persians and Justinian could turn to his dream of reuniting the West with the East. 
First, Belisarius was sent to North Africa, where he defeated the Vandals and returned North Africa to the Empire. Next, with only 7,500 men, he landed in Sicily and conquered all the way up until Naples. And with new troops, which he needed, came the eunuch commander Narses, who disagreed with Belisarius and hampered progress in Italy. In the end, Belisarius took Rome with some trickery and was called back to deal with the Sasanians again. During the war, the plague broke out of Egypt and broke the empires. Both of them, even Justinian caught the plague but he eventually recovered. In his coma, his wife Theodora took over the empire, exiled John the Cappadocian and dismissed Belisarius temporarily. After her death, the last company was chosen to militarily stabilize the empire, where they made peace with Persia, completely expelled the Ostrogoths from Italy and then Liberius took over half of Iberia and established the province of Spania. In the end though, after his death in 565, his empire again fell into chaos and lost most of Justinian's gains. Next, we go to 610 with the coronation of Heraclius. He ascended the throne after defeating the usurper Phocas in Carthage. His reign was marked by a number of military achievements. He first took charge of the Byzantine-Sasanian War of 602 to 628. At first, the Byzantines were in a hot mess. The Sasanians under Khosrow II took Mesopotamia and Egypt and with the help of the Jews took Jerusalem and Damascus. To compound this, the Slavs took this opportunity to wreak havoc to the Balkans and the Sasanians pushed all the way up to the walls of Constantinople itself. Heraclius sued for peace, even offering to become a vassal of Persia, but Khosrow refused and Heraclius thought of fleeing the city, but he was convinced to remain by one patriarch Sergius. After this, Khosrow agreed to a peace, allowing Heraclius to build back his empire by cutting non-military expenditure and taking church treasure. And when the war flared back up, he smashed the Persians and dug deep into their territory. Only after the Islamic invasions from the south happened did the war end, after Syria, Egypt, Mesopotamia and the Sasanian Empire itself was gobbled up by the Rashidun Caliphate. By the time of Heraclius' death in 641, the empire was in a free fall. The next ruler here is Leo III the Isaurian, also the Syrian. He finally ended the 20 years anarchy, which actually lasted for 22 years, by forcing Theodosius II to abdicate. His first problem came in the form of a siege, specifically the Second Arab Siege of Constantinople. This siege began the same year Leo took the throne in 717 and lasted for an entire year. The siege was successfully repelled due to several reasons including tough resistance, Hungarian reinforcements, the impenetrable walls of Constantinople and the exhaustion of the Arab supplies. And thus, in 718, the Arabs withdrew from Constantinople. Following this, he quelled rebellions in Sicily and Greece, reformed the law codes and increased the efficiency of the army so that when the Umayyads invaded again in 726 and 739, they were decisively beaten. Leo died in 741 and was succeeded by his son, Constantine V. And so, here I leave you, Rome tumbling towards its decline and its territories being swallowed by its foes. In the next video, we dive into the other four rulers left and finally see the sad end of a two-millennia-old empire. Thanks for watching.